Hello, this is a BTEC Sport and Exercise Science video, Unit 2 Functional Anatomy. We are focusing on the skeletal system and specifically D1, which is all about the anatomy of a bone. And we look specifically at a long bone. So hopefully you already know that whilst we start as a cartilage model, we develop tough, hardened bone. And it's our um, framework, it's the structure of our body. Key facts about the anatomy of a bone then. So it's a rigid, hard structure. It's dynamic. So it isn't just a sort of static thing. It responds to stresses that we apply through it. So the more exercise you do, the, the right kind of exercise, the more your bone tissue will respond and grow. It changes. Bones are alive. So I think we often associate bones with skeletons and, you know, effectively dead bodies. But bones are alive. They've got a blood and a nerve supply. And here you can see the um, breakdown, the component, the content of bone tissue. You can see it's a quarter water and almost half made up of mineral calcium salts. You may know that already, but also it's about a third made up of collagen. A collagen is a protein that is like a glue and it binds all the bony matrix tissues together. It's really important for bone strength. So this, this image, I guess, in the middle here is a real bone. Um, but this is the diagrammatic version that you'll often see and you might see in an exam question. All these labels, all these bits here are the component parts of a bone, the anatomy of a bone. And you need to know how they're structured and what function they play for us. So I'm going to go through um, component, component by component. So one at a time and we'll look at the structure and function of each of those. So first of all, the periosteum. Now, the periosteum, you can see, if we take this femur, this long bone here, and we look at it um, as a cross-section, what you can see is this outer coat, this outer fibrous layer is the periosteum, and it's a protective membrane. So you'll need to know that this periosteum is a fibrous protective membrane that covers the outside of a bone. And there's the text that follow it follows this. You can also see, of course, it contains nerves and blood vessels. Then we've got these two um, descriptions of parts of the bone. So the long length of the bone is called the diaphysis, and the two ends are the epiphyses. I think it's easy to remember, perhaps E is for end of bone. Let's look at the epiphyses information first, so the knobbly bits on the end of the bone, basically. So there's two, one at each end. They're large, round structures. They can sometimes be called condyles. We'll look at what that means in a different video. So the long, round bump at the end of the bone. Now, the content of these epiphyses, or an epiphysis, is this honeycomb-looking structure. This is called cancellous bone tissue. And inside that cancellous bone tissue, or spongy bone it's sometimes called, I want you to learn cancellous bone tissue, is red bone marrow. And importantly, red blood cells are made there. Again, all of these bits we'll revisit, don't worry. You can also see this sort of faded line there. That's an epiphyseal plate, or a growth plate. And that is where bone growth occurs. That's where ossification occurs in your bones while you're still growing. So the epiphysis is the bump, the round end of the bone, and it's got cancellous bone tissue in it, uh, which is where red bone marrow, is, bone marrow is and red blood cells are produced. The diaphysis then, the long shaft of the bone, the length of the bone. The diaphysis is this length section. It's got inside it a cavity, and you can see it's called the medullary cavity. And you can see this yellow stuff here, the medullary cavity contains yellow bone marrow, which is a fat store. Again, there are blood vessels and nerves throughout the diaphysis. Let's go back to epiphyseal plates. So this is this this is the epiphysis, the end bit, and of course this is the epiphyseal plate or the growth plate. You can see on this um, X-ray, of course, somebody's epiphyseal plates. So this looks like it's the femur, yep, and there's the growth plate, and this is the tibia, and there's a growth plate. So this is the knee joint. So epiphyseal plates, 
There are two, one at the end of each long bone. The one furthest away from your joint, your um, the joint that joins your limb to your body, is called the distal epiphyseal plate or epiphysis. And the one that's nearest where your limb meets your body, your torso, is called the proximal one, the closest one. The epiphyseal plates is where bone growth happens, ossification happens. It is basically cartilage that gets converted or calcified, hardened and converted into new bone. This is called ossification. Um, and this is where, when you're growing still, your long bones lengthen. You get taller, don't you, because all your long bones get longer. And this growth plate is where that happens. Osteoclast, if you remember, clear out the old cartilage and osteoblast deposit new bone cells or new bone tissue. They deposit calcium and collagen to make new bone. Now these epiphyseal plates are active until about your mid-20s when they themselves become hardened and become epiphyseal lines. That's when you stop growing. That's when you'll stop getting taller. If you remember, just to remind you that connection between the bone cells, class clear or, or resorb calcium, blast build or deposit calcium and collagen, and eventually osteoblasts become osteocytes and they control bone remodeling and bone density. Let's look now at the two types of bone tissue. So here is a hip joint, it looks like. This is the epiphysis of the femur. And you can see really clearly this honeycomb-like bone tissue. That's called cancellous bone. But you can also see this tough bone here. And that's called compact bone. It's much more solid, as you can see. Here's our diagrammatic version of it. This is the tough, solid, compact bone, this bit. And here's the honeycomb-like, spongy, or proper name, cancellous bone. And again, another version you can see here. So there's almost like a, a sandwich. The cancellous bone is the, is the honeycomb structure in the middle. And we've got this tough outer compact bone on either side. So compact bone. About 80% of our skeleton is made of compact bone tissue. It's tough. It is definitely what lines the outside of the diaphysis here. So you often get diagrams that are labelled and point into the compact bone on the diaphysis. It's a tough, solid outer layer of bone. So I think the fact that it's solid makes it different from the cancellous bone, which is honeycomb. -like. It's got gaps in it. It's really packed with collagen fibres, which makes it dense and strong and compact, solid. It gives us our long bones strength in the length, if you like. So your limbs, obviously, you walk, you jump, you run. You put stresses through the long bones lengthways. And this, is, this type of bone tissue is what makes it strong. It absorbs impact and stress when the forces go through them. It's not as strong sideways, but it's really strong long ways. Then we've got the cancellous bone tissue, the honeycomb-like, with gaps in the middle. So this is about 20% of our skeleton. It's also called spongy bone because of the trabeculae, um, basically the holes and the gap, the, the sort of these um, spindles of bone rather than solid bone. Honeycomb-like in structure. And um, again, the, the collagen fibres are more widely spaced. So unlike the compact bone where they were squished together and solid, these are spaced out, leaving holes. And the reason this cancellous bone is really effective is because it's incredibly strong, but because of the holes, it's really light. Um, and it allows us to deal with forces in all, all directions. There's a little bit of flexibility, but it's strong in all directions. Importantly, it contains red bone marrow, uh, which is where red, bones, red, red blood cells and white blood cells and platelets are produced. Let's move on to look at the two types of bone marrow, which we've already kind of mentioned. So red bone marrow in the cancellous bone at the epiphyses um, produces the blood cells, we've just said. Yellow bone marrow in the medullary cavity, in the diaphysis, the length of the bone. And this is a fat store. This gives you a little bit of a summary 
of the components of a bag. So this draws together most of the labels here, many, you know, almost all of which I've mentioned in the previous slides. So periosteum outer layer, the ends of the bones, the length of the bone, the gap, the cavity in the middle, the two types of bone. This is the solid outer layer, pr protective and strong. This is the honeycomb um, structure, which is at the ends of the bones, which contains the red bone marrow. Um, the epiphyseal plates are your growth plates at the epiphyses. Actually, I didn't mention much, but you may already know of articular cartilage. An articular cartilage is the cartilage at the ends of the bones on the outside, you can see here, and that is um, smooth and slippery cartilage, which is designed to reduce friction. Reduce friction. We don't want our bones two bones at the joint rubbing on each other. It's incredibly sore, the bone will get damaged. So we have this protective layer of cartilage to, which is structured as smooth and slippery to um, hopefully protect the ends of the bones. There's examples of, long, of typically long bones here, which again, you'll learn later. And these are generally what long bones do. Lastly then, let's have a look at a few exam questions on the anatomy of bones. So, identify which letters in figure two. So it's given you a diagram with several letters and it wants you to show the location of the cancellous bone, periosteum and growth plate. Um, so it's given you pictures, it's given you six options and you've got to pick out three of them that relate to these components. Which one is cancellous bone, which is the periosteum, and which is the growth plate? The second part of the question says, okay, what's the function of the growth plate? Now, noticeably, this is, whole question is for six marks. So, you would get three marks for identifying, that's a simple thing, it just wants you to say which letter is the cancellous bone, periosteum and growth plate, three marks. And then it wants you to earn your th other three marks by describing the function of the growth plates, the epiphyseal plates. Let's have a look at the mark scheme. So, cancellous bone is B, periosteum is E, the outer outer layer. This is a terrible diagram because F and E are really similar. E is just inside, which I think is compact bone. E is the outer periosteum layer. And then C are the growth plates. And then, oops, sorry. Then the other three marks for what's the job of the growth plates, here we are. It's where ossification happens, it's where osteoblasts convert cartilage into bone, um, it's where the bones increase in length when we are growing. Here's another question, explain the importance of the skeleton in red blood cell production. So here's the mark scheme. We produce red blood cells in red bone marrow, which is in the epiphysis of long bones. Um, we need to produce it because red blood cells are essential for transporting oxygen around our body. Um, red blood cells are mainly in long bones and flat bones. A couple more. Here's one that says state two features of cancellous bone. Now, two features for two marks. Obviously, it just wants you to state what one is and state what the other is, and you earn your two marks. Cancellous bone is the spongy honeycomb so this describes its structure. This is what it has in it, the red bone marrow, which produces red blood cells. This is where it's found. Um, and this is suggesting that outside the cancellous bone is compact bone, which gives it some elasticity. Certainly from the front three, the first three bullet points, there's easy options to get your two marks there. Last question for you. Here's a table which has some anatom anatomical terms to describe long bone anatomy. Here's one example. So it's given you a growth plate is the area where bones grow in length until a person reaches maturity. What it wants you to do is say, what's the term for these two descriptions, the shaft of the long bone and the thin outer layer of the bone containing nerves and blood vessels. So two marks for two anatomical terms. Here's the mark scheme. The shaft is the diaphysis and the periosteum is the outer layer. So you can see it's actually quite straightforward. You've just got to learn the structure and function of all of those anatomical components. So we've gone through here the anatomy of the bone, looking at a long bone specifically and what all these things mean.